you can turn just about any kind of container into um, a place to slump clay, to create a slump mold. Um, you know, anything from a yogurt container to, you know, a, a dish from um, Target or Ikea. Um, and one of my favorites is just a, a bucket. Um, and it creates just a very, very simple, um, I usually make them sort of gently sloping um, molds. Um, great for decoration because the form is just so simple that it's a place to allow decoration to really shine. So that is what I'm going to do right now. These slab sticks actually um, keep the thickness of the clay the same. I usually get three eighths of an inch thick and that seems like a really good thickness to start with. Um, and for these kinds of molds, it's a great, great thickness. So I'm just trying to roll a slab that is going to, you know, span this, this gap here. So I'm going to prep my slab to, to get rid of any, any unwanted textures in, in the clay. Anything sort of egregious. So I've done that, and now I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to put it on top of the bucket. And I'm going to fold it a little because I do, it's going to create a vacuum and I do want to have um, some of it slump down on its own to begin with. So I've sort of eased some of that in there now. So I have a, um, a slope, like a gentle bowl inside. And <clears throat> right away I'm going to get rid of some of this extra clay, not too much, because if you cut too close to the edge, it will it'll actually just fall into the bucket. But um, I'm going to get rid of some of it because it will actually, it's so heavy that it's pulling um, the clay back. It's actually doing the reverse of what I want it to do. So just get rid of some of that. And now I'm going to take uh, my pouncing tool, which is just a old sock and some grog inside of it. And I'm going to gently sort of shape the inside of this to um, the shape that I want. Because it's completely sealed off, um, you occasionally, in order to release that bubble in there, um, that resistance, you need to just pick it up so that you can get it to um, slump a little bit more in the center. And that looks good, so I'm going to seal that back down. So I'll go around, just sort of very gently press this on here, not too hard because you don't want it to get stuck. Now I have the desired shape on the inside and looks good. So I'm going to trim up the edge and bring it a little closer. But again, I'm not going to take it too close to the edge because I don't want it to fall in. As it shrinks, right, it's going to pull itself away from the bucket. So I'm definitely going to leave uh, about a half an inch there on the edge. So I've let my bisque mold set up or my slump mold set up until it's uh, leather hard and now it's ready to come out of the bucket. One thing you need to make sure of is that the, the actual interior of the mold has set up enough um, because the outside edges will definitely set up before the inside. The inside is, is contained almost within the plastic so it prevents it from drying as evenly. So make sure that that is, is dry before you go and flip it out, which I'm gonna do right now. So I would take a plaster bat or you know you can take a, you know, whatever, whatever kind of bat you use, but I have these sheetrock bats, um, which I like. Um, put it on the outside here, and then take your bucket and just flip it over. Now what you're going to want to do is just trim the edge of your slump mold to get rid of this sort of wavy, wavy gravy kind of stuff. And, and um, if you have any imperfections in the surface that bother you, now's the time to get rid of those too. You would take a little bit of clay and um, just fill it in and then rib it out. So we'll take, take my fettling knife, a sharp fettling knife, and just go around and follow the, the edge that the bucket has made. And there you have your perfectly lovely hump bisque mold.